adult Scooby-Doo reboot Velma ripped by critics, audiences, where did everything go so horribly wrong? Velma is so bad it spawned psyop conspiracy theories. Velma's debut audience score plummets towards single figures as Scooby-Doo fans don't see the funny side. Stream it or skip it. Velma on HBO Max, a cynical take on Scooby-Doo that could do with 100% less Velma. Velma tries to milk grown up laughs out of Scooby-Doo's pre-dog days. Gay and raunchy Velma series hilariously reinvents Scooby-Doo for adults. Mindy Kaling's hated Velma series is also somehow extremely successful. Velma premiere directly responds to the show's racist backlash. Uh, it's funny, it's been all over the headlines. I noticed this thing, I was like, what the heck is this? Um, I watched the first two episodes, so you don't have to essentially, um, but if you do wanna watch it, um, it is available on HBO Max. Um, I will say right off the bat, uh, it's not as bad as people say, uh, and it's also not as good as some people say. Um, first, the animation is actually fantastic on this thing, for real. The animation is really good. The animation style is also really, really good. Uh, another thing which is really interesting as well, the writing of the show is actually really, really good. I'm serious, the writing is really good. However, some people are not gonna like the jokes, and that is real. So um, the jokes tend to lean woke, right? So if you're the kind of person that says, um, go woke, go broke, you're probably not gonna like the show. That's just how it is but the actual writing in terms of what I mean by writing, the story structure, um, also to the way the scenes move very, really quickly. Um, the people who make this show are extremely talented. It's very obvious. The voice acting is also very, very good. There's a lot of good elements in this show. There's a lot of money they put in this show, um, but why I wouldn't necessarily recommend watching the show is because it is animation and for me, uh, when I watch uh, animation, I wanna see something more creative, more more crazy and something new. So Scooby-Doo is not necessarily something I, I, I wanna see. I, I grew up with Scooby-Doo when I was a kid and, and believe me guys, I was, I, I was a kid from the 70s and 80s, you know, Scooby, Scooby-Doo, where are you? I mean, I really know. We need some help from you now. <laughs> Come on, Scooby-Doo. Okay, anyway. Um, and I, true story, I used to even show Scooby-Doo at my Halloween parties uh, when I was in college and, and people would come over and have vintage Scooby-Doo stuff because Scooby, Scooby's awesome. The, the show though, unfortunately, um, represents sort of uh, what is wrong with Hollywood. And, and this is real. So first thing, um, what is wrong with Hollywood, what's that to do with Velma is because you basically, if you want to get something made, you got to attach it to an IP. Uh, because people are, are not willing to take risks on new ideas, right? And so then what you got to end up doing is you got to end up taking no, uh, old characters and sort of reinventing them uh, in new ways. Now, for some people, right, uh, essentially, and, and I just keep it real, um, and I, I don't want to be too mean, but this is just how it is. If you have low IQ and, and you don't want the world to ever change, you get so upset if something changes on anything, right? That this is how it is. But this is a surreality. Uh, throughout time, throughout history, uh, artists, right, creative people have always taken familiar things and, and changed them. And for me, that that's not weird. That's that's just an interpretation of something. It's something like if you study, say, for example, Hamlet, right, and, and you might go see like you know thirty different versions of Hamlet, um, and each director will have a different interpretation of that. And so I look at something like a Scooby Doo, just like that. So it doesn't matter to me if if, if characters change and stuff like that. It does that doesn't matter. Um, I get it though that some people will be really upset and disappointed. Like for example, uh, the shaky character doesn't like drugs, <laughs> so uh, they even purposely do that in the show to say, look, we're changing the character. And um, you know, and I get it. Some people aren't gonna like that. And I like, and I watch it. And I'm like, okay, fine. That's that's what you want to do. Um, but but the the main sort of uh, problem with the with the show really is that it is animation, and they're going for a certain kind of audience, and and they seem to be going for a very very small audience. So um, I believe this woman is uh, the show is targeted to women, uh, older women, because it's not really for children, because uh, it's a lot of adult humor. And also um, older women that are essentially more on the on the left leaning side, right? So you're already sort of like limiting the audience that you're going for with this kind of show. I, I was asking my wife about this. We we're having this conversation because I was saying, for example, you know, do do females like cartoons? And, and the one that came to my mind was something like Sailor Moon. And she's like, yeah, you know, we, we watch Sailor Moon, of course. And and then the question was, then um, do you need necessarily a uh, female oriented cartoon for adult women. And it was interesting because I, I, the reason why I put this uh, question out there is because Rick and Morty exists, right? And I would pose this to you is, do you think uh, Rick and Morty is aimed towards dudes? Is it aimed towards men? And, and my wife was like, well, women watch that show too. And so this is the sort of the, the, the reason or, or sort of the argument I would make in something like a Velma 
is that if, if you really do want to improve things in Hollywood and improve opportunities for everybody, is don't just think, hey, I have to make a Velma show for adult women, left-leaning, something like that. Is this, hey, I want to make Rick and Morty and maybe make you know a couple female characters, but make the same kind of show as Rick and Morty, and people are going to watch it. Um, I think this is the same thing, for example, um, this is also a very real. If you if you you know change uh, characters and stuff like that, and, and you change race or, or gender, sometimes you get a bunch of basically low IQ people that just complain about everything. That's just a, what low IQ people do. It's an unfortunate thing. Um, here's the reality, though. Uh, if you make a really good show, and I'll give you an example, um, like uh, House of the Dragon, and you put a lot of female characters in there doing female stuff, and I mean my female stuff like being pregnant, this kind of thing, um, you can actually really make really great drama and put a lot of scenes out there and points of view that people haven't seen uh, if you do it right and you're targeting everybody, not just a subset of the population. In this case, Velma is targeting, again, adult women on the left-leaning side. Um, and, and it's just small. So I, I get the jokes that they're going for, but it, it's not really targeting uh, to me. Um, also, too, from my experiences in Hollywood, this is very real. Um, and, and I'll say, unfortunately, unfortunately, however you want to say it, there definitely is a, a, a subset of women who are, again, are kind of like this sort of like a, if you want to use the word feminazi, this sort of thing, that, that are in that camp. It is, a, it is a real thing. And part of my big complaints in Hollywood is the same way I, I don't like, say, a male-dominated uh, sexist industry in, in that one direction, I also don't want a, a female-dominated sexist industry in the other direction. And, and that's the sort of why my channel, if you guys watch, I, I try to keep it as honest and fair and neutral as I can because I want to I live in a world where, where everybody is welcome and, and that you don't have to subscribe to a particular ideology, something like that. So part of the major problem with development in terms of the humor is, is they're really, really targeting um, political, race, uh, you know, gender, all sorts of ideologies in, into the show. It, it's like way too heavy handed uh, political. Now, the, the, the kind of stupid thing about this, though, to also to be fair, just to be aware, um, if they if they took this show and maybe made it more like you know Fox News kind of humor that kind of stuff, um, maybe it would be opposite. You know, maybe you'd have CNN hating on the show and Fox News loving the show and stuff like this. And and part of the problem, which, which I think again, which I want to really emphasize, is um, and I and I'm with, right with her with many people out there is I do actually do sometimes just want to watch my shows and not be so heavily fisted <laughs> um, down with, with with political talk. With that said, though, um, the best shows. And I mean, the very best shows address political and social issues, but don't necessarily make it so heavy handed and don't necessarily make it so obvious. Um, one of the, uh, I'll give a couple different shows that I really like for just for example, uh, Harry Potter, right? Uh, and you talk about say Malfoy and you talk about the, the main character, Harry Potter, they basically address the issues of class and this kind of thing, or, or they, they'll talk about it with like essentially racism with like um, the, the the Hermione character in say Malfoy, like, you know, are you pure blood or not pure blood? And Hermione's clearly better than all the other wizards there, but she's not pure blood, these kind of things, right? Um, but it doesn't come off so heavy handed that like it turns people away. Uh, maybe it turns some people away, but for me, I, I really like those kind of shows. Um, the same thing, for example, Game of Thrones, House of, House of the Dragon, which I always compliment that show so well, they, they deal such a, a good job with like political issues and class issues. But it's funny because when, when people watch it, they don't necessarily probably thinking about that stuff. And Game of Thrones is actually more real than, than anything that you get on other things. Even though there's a bunch of dragon stuff like that, it portrays the upper class like in very, very real ways. So um, some of the things that, uh, you know, why you should watch Velma, if, if you really wanted to take a look at it, it's on HBO Max. The animation is fantastic. I, I am very serious. This. The animation is fantastic. So maybe not all the not all the jokes land. Maybe they don't, right? Um, some of the jokes do land, and the animation is fantastic. I really like the art style. I really like how quick, quickly the show moves. Uh, the soundtrack is really good as well. Uh, and also, too, moreover, the cast and the voice acting are also fantastic. So it's actually really clear that HBO put a lot of money into this thing. They, they, they really did. And, and also, too, this when I was watching, I was telling my wife how it also frustrates me, and this is just real, and this is part of the frustration of Hollywood, and this is a complicated topic. Um, even though if you watch my channel, you should be able to tell from YouTube, um, I would love to work in Hollywood. I'd love to run these kind of shows. I would love to do animation. I could totally do it, and I could make a better show than most people there, and I'm being really honest and really serious, but I don't look the way that they want me to look. They're only looking for certain kind of people. When I was in Hollywood, this is just real. Um, you know, they were mostly looking for, for females. That's a real thing. And it's uncomfortable to talk about, but it's just real. And everyone knew it and we all knew it. And, and any kind of script that you, that you wrote at the time, you'd have to basically write a female lead. It's an uncomfortable topic, but it, it's just the truth. 
before my time in Hollywood, it would be all dominated by men, which is also real, right? If you wanted to write a script and you want to be successful, you write a show about white dudes rescuing women, right? And now we've flipped the script and it's like, okay, now you got to write a bunch of shows about women being liberated, this kind of thing. And, and it, it is frustrating in the terms of, of, you know, just wanting to tell any kind of story, any good story, because it just feels like at any given moment when you're in Hollywood, you're lucky with the trend or you're not lucky with the trend, right? <laughs> but also to be fair, um, hopefully, you know, we can be in a world eventually where uh, we're more concerned about uh, solid storytelling and not necessarily concerned about identity politics. I hope you guys understand my, my point of view on these things because, in fact, I am happy and thrilled to watch stories from any country, any language, coming from any kind of person. I just want good stories, not necessarily just choosing uh, based on what people look like. So, um, yes, uh, Velma's show uh, is woke. Yes, that's very true. Um, but it's not as terrible as people make it out to be. Um, if you're, you know, love Fox News and stuff like this, you'll, you'll be offended by some of the jokes. Um, but I want you to also just be aware when you're offended by things, just think about when it's in the other direction, say the years ahead, uh, or I'm sorry, years before, um, people are offended by all kinds of racist stereotypes. This, stuff. this is very, very real. But it doesn't mean, though, that we need to go racist and, and sexist all the way to the left, right? Um, hopefully someday we can be somewhere in the middle, <laughs> which I think is great. And also, too, to be, be, be fair as well, um, if you are a free speech or Fox News kind of person, um, people have a right to make the show Velma and you have a right not to like it. That's totally fine. Um, I don't particularly like the show Velma that much, but I don't think it's the worst show on TV. In fact, um, however, if, if I were to uh, recommend animation, I would say go with Legend of Vox Machina, um, which comes up in season two very, very soon. And I'm looking forward to that show. So love to hear your thoughts on Velma if you saw it. Uh, love to hear your thoughts on all these things and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.